Hello everyone, our today's topic is alveolar ventilation perfusion ratio. Starting with the definition. It is the ratio of alveolar ventilation per minute to the quantity of blood flow to the alveoli per minute. Normal ventilation perfusion ratio is about 0.84 to 0.9 because the ventilation per minute is 4.2 to 5 liters per minute and blood flow that is 5 liters per minute. Therefore the ratio is 0.84 to 0.9. At this ratio, maximum oxygenation occurs. More important is whether the ratio is present uniformly throughout the lungs that is important for proper oxygenation. And if it is not, then oxygenation will be defective. Now, what is the cause of not uniform ventilation perfusion ratio? First, we discuss about effect of gravity on the alveolar ventilation. Alveolar ventilation is more or less eventually distributed in the supine position because the hydrostatic effect on the intrapleural pressure is reduced. But when we are standing, so in the vertical lung, this alveolar ventilation is unevenly distributed because of the effect of gravity. As we have discussed, intra-alveolar pressure or intra-pulmonary pressure is zero throughout the lungs in static condition. But intra-pleural pressure shows the gradient to about 8 cm of water. What does it mean? The apex of the lungs, this intra-pleural pressure is minus 10 cm of water and at the basis this pressure is minus 2 cm of water. So the difference is 8 cm of water. And because of the change in the intrapleural pressure, Transpulmonary pressure is also affected. Why? Because transpulmonary pressure, it is the difference of intrapleural and intrapulmonary pressure. Because of more negative intrapleural pressure at apex, the pressure is minus 10 cm of water. The apical alveoli are larger but poorly ventilated. While the basal alveoli, because the intrapleural pressure is less negative, they are smaller but better ventilated. Now, effect of gravity on the ventilation perfusion ratio. As we have discussed, alveolar ventilation decreases linearly from base to apex. So you can say that basal alveoli are overventilated and apical alveoli are underventilated. Gravity also affects the perfusion. Therefore, you can say perfusion also decreases from base to apex. But the effect of gravity is more on the perfusion as compared to ventilation. So you can say that apical alveoli are more underperfused than basal alveoli. You can say both ventilation as well as perfusion both are reduced in the apical alveoli. Therefore, in apical alveoli, ventilation is increased than perfusion. So, ventilation of the alveolus is more than perfusion. Therefore, you can say there is more available oxygen in this alveoli that can be transported away from the alveoli by flowing blood. And the ventilation of this alveoli is said to be wasted. The ventilation of the anatomical dead space area in the respiratory passages as we have discussed from nose to terminal bronchioles that is anatomical dead space which is also wasted here this ventilation is also wasted which is known as physiological dead space so physiological dead space is created in apical alveoli this physiological dead space is measured by using Bohr's equation this is the equation Physiological dead space divided by tidal volume is equal to partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveolar air minus partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the expired air divided by partial pressure of carbon dioxide in alveolar air. Now, let us discuss how this equation has come. As all of you know that PV is equal to constant. So here you can see 
partial pressure and volume of carbon dioxide in inspired air is equal to partial pressure and volume of carbon dioxide in expired air okay now this inspired air partial pressure and volume they are divided into two compartment partial pressure and volume in alveolar air plus partial pressure and volume in the dead space air so inspired air because it is converted into dead space half volume 150 ml 350 ml that will go to alveoli this is same now partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the inspired air that is 0.3% you can say it it is around 0 so this becomes 0 now our equation is partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveolar air multiplied by volume of carbon dioxide in the alveolar air is equal to partial pressure of carbon dioxide in expired and volume of carbon dioxide in the expired air now this volume of carbon dioxide in the alveolar air is equal to tidal volume minus dead space volume again we place it here then mathematical calculation gives you the value this way now partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveolar air and tidal volume minus partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the expired air we make it here because we want to find out the value of dead space so we are placing dead space on this side of the equation okay so dead space volume here we have placed it here okay mathematical equation gives us this value this is tidal volume and volume of carbon dioxide in the expired air are equal that is equal to tidal volume so tidal volume we have written here in place of this two okay and this way we can get this equation which we have discussed now why do we take carbon dioxide partial pressure because when dead space volume increases what happens to partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the expired air that decreases so by getting this value partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the expired air when it decreases then dead space volume increases so we can easily get the value of physiological dead space so here we have discussed that ventilation and perfusion both are reduced in the apical alveoli so the ratio increases for example suppose our normal ventilation perfusion ratio that is ventilation is 4 liters and perfusion is 5 liters so our ratio is around 0.9 okay in apical alveoli both are reduced you can say for example if ventilation decreases from 4 to 2 and perfusion becomes 1 why as i discussed gravity has more effect on the perfusion so what will be the ratio ratio increases here okay now opposite thing happens in the basal alveoli basal alveoli because of effect of gravity ventilation and perfusion both are increased in the basal alveoli from 4 ventilation becomes 6 and from 5 blood flow becomes 12 you can say what happens to the ratio ratio becomes 0.5 so here ventilation perfusion ratio decreases in the basal alveoli what is the effect of decrease in the ventilation perfusion ratio we have discussed increase ventilation perfusion ratio that is creation of dead space when the ventilation perfusion ratio decreases below normal there is inadequate ventilation to provide oxygen ventilation is reduced as compared to perfusion Okay. so you can say that the ventilation is not adequate for perfusion therefore certain fraction of venous blood passing through the pulmonary capillaries does not become oxygenated and this blood is known as shunted blood also some additional blood flow through the bronchial vessels it is there which is responsible for 2% of the shunted blood therefore total quantitative amount of the shunted blood per minute is known as physiological shunt therefore you can say in basal alveoli because decrease in the ventilation perfusion ratio there is development of physiological shunt physiological shunt is calculated by following equation qps physiological shunt blood flow per minute is equal to here qt cardiac output per minute cio2 
that is concentration of oxygen in the arterial blood when the ventilation perfusion ratio is ideal minus concentration of oxygen in the arterial blood which we are getting divided by concentration of oxygen in the again arterial blood when the ideal ventilation perfusion ratio and concentration of oxygen in the venous blood applied aspect because of high ventilation perfusion ratio the apical alveolar air has low partial pressure of carbon dioxide and high partial pressure of oxygen therefore this apical alveoli they are predisposed to tuberculosis because high alveolar po2 provides favorable environment for the growth of mycobacterium tuberculosis this diagram shows the effect of gravity on the ventilation perfusion ratio here you can see this is normal ventilation perfusion ratio this is the condition of apical part where ventilation decreases also perfusion also decreases but there is more decrease in the perfusion so what happens to the ratio the ratio increases as i told you this is here 4 by 5 for example here this becomes 2 by 1 so the ratio itself becomes 2 opposite is true for the bottom of the lungs what happens here there is increase in the ventilation here from 4 it becomes 6 but also more increase in the perfusion you can say here it becomes 12 so what happens to the ratio the ratio becomes 6 by 12 or 0.5 or 1 by 2 so the ratio decreases now what are the effects of alteration in ventilation perfusion ratio when ventilation perfusion ratio is normal it means both ventilation and blood flow perfusion they are normal therefore exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide across the respiratory membrane is nearly optimum therefore alveolar po2 is normal about the level 104 millimeter of mercury and partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli is also 40 mm hg now what are the effects of increase ventilation perfusion ratio what does it mean it means that alveolar ventilation is more than blood flow the whole of the alveolar air is not utilized for the gas exchange and the extra air in the alveoli it goes wasted and that creates alveolar dead space for example when ventilation perfusion ratio increases to infinity means the perfusion becomes zero you can see here there is no gas exchange because there is no capillary blood flow to carry oxygen away or to bring carbon dioxide to the alveoli therefore instead of alveolar gases coming to the equilibrium with the venous blood the alveolar air becomes equal to humidified inspired air and therefore the composition of alveolar air is near to the atmospheric air means partial pressure of oxygen is 150 millimeter of mercury and partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 0 millimeter of mercury what are the effects of increased ventilation perfusion ratio they are decreased exchange of gases across the respiratory membrane there is creation of alveolar dead space and also there is changes in the alveolar air composition next is low ventilation perfusion ratio it occurs when the rate of blood flow is more than rate of alveolar ventilation so you can say that the ventilation is not enough to provide oxygen and therefore fraction of the venous blood passes through the pulmonary capillaries without getting oxygenated and this is known as shunted blood and here is the creation of physiological shunt what are the effects when ventilation perfusion ratio becomes zero you can say there is no ventilation ventilation is zero therefore partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the alveolus it comes equilibrium with the partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the venous blood which is flowing through the pulmonary capillaries so you can say here 
partial pressure of oxygen is 40 mmHg and partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 45 mm of mercury in the alveolar air. Now, what are the effects of low ventilation perfusion ratio? They are decreased gas exchange. Here you can see there is no pressure difference between the pulmonary capillary blood partial pressure and alveolar air partial pressure. So, gas exchange is reduced. Second is physiological shunt creation and third that is changes in the alveolar air composition. Now, causes of uneven alveolar ventilation. They are obstruction because of bronchial asthma, emphysema, pulmonary fibrosis, pneumothorax and congestive heart failure. And causes of uneven pulmonary perfusion, they are anatomical shunts like in fallot steatrology, pulmonary embolism here you can see that blocks the blood flow, increased pulmonary resistance in conditions like pulmonary fibrosis, pneumothorax and congestive heart failure. Also regional decrease in the pulmonary vascular bed in emphysema. Effect of ventilation perfusion ratio on the pulmonary gas exchange. Optimum gas exchange takes place between the ventilation perfusion ratio 0.8 to 1. Either decrease or increase in the ventilation perfusion ratio decreases gas exchange. When we are performing exercise, gas exchange is increased because of improvement in the ventilation perfusion ratio. Here the word is improvement, not increase. Improvement means both ventilation and perfusion both are increased and therefore the ratio improves. So the gas exchange increases. A blood aspect in chronic obstructive lung diseases. Some areas of the lung exhibit serious physiological shunt and other areas exhibit serious physiological dead space. Both these conditions, they decrease the effectiveness of the lungs to exchange gases and therefore reducing their effectiveness to as little as one tenth of the normal. This is all about alveolar ventilation perfusion ratio. Thank you all.